This episode of Caster's Guild is one in a series of episodes where we will be playing the beta test of Daggerheart. Unlike other episodes of Caster's Guild, we recommend that you listen to these episodes in order. In order not to break immersion, we will not be reading ads during these episodes, so to help us out, please check out the links in the description below. Daggerheart is a fantasy role-playing game, in this case being played by adult players, so be aware you may encounter descriptions of violence, gore, mature themes, and the use of mature language. Listener discretion is advised. Our story begins with Garrick Reed, the right-hand knight of King Emrys, who has gathered his most trusted allies to carry an important package to Hush, a small village within the ancient forest of Sablewood. The crate is large, heavy, and sealed with magic, addressed to the Whitefire Arcanist. They've been given a map and a carriage, and the promise of a reward upon their arrival. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Caster's Guild. I am your guild master, Rick Perry, and today we are going to be playing the open beta of Daggerheart. Daggerheart being the new fantasy TTRPG put out by Critical Role and Darrington Press. Today I will be playing the role of Game Master, and I have some lovely guild members joining me as well as my fellow guild master. Feel free to introduce yourselves and your character, starting with you, Guildmaster Baron. Hey, I'm Guildmaster Baron Kane, and I don't have to come up with a silly thing to introduce myself with today. You do need to tell us who you're playing, though. I don't. <laughs> it's Garrick. I'm playing Garrick Reed, the affable, noble human fighter. I'm going to hang on to that word as long as I can. Um, we'll, we'll see how that works out for you. Yeah, likable. My name is Anthony, uh, and I am playing uh, Ribbit, the... Wait, no. I am playing Barnacle, the rogue Ribbit, or, you know, that Ribbit guy. Hey, I'm Gunner. I'm playing Varian Soto, the wild-born Katari Ranger. Hi, I'm Killer Christmas Tree. I'm playing Kari Nix, the giant stalwart guardian. And our party, as you've heard in the beginning, has a special charge uh, that they are taking through the forest... And we're going to go ahead and jump right into the game here. This evening, your party finally made it to the Sablewood, a sprawling forest of colossal trees some say are even older than the Forgotten Gods. It's a place renowned for two things. It's sunken pathways that provide the trade routes for many traveling merchants, and it's unique hybrid animals. Even now, from within your carriage, you can hear strange sounds. The bird calls of the lark moths, the croak of the lemur toads, the skittering of a family of foxbacks in the underbrush. One of you is driving the carriage. Who is it? <laughs> Not me. I don't think I could. I had the, the, the my fingers keep getting stuck to the well. My my, what, what are they fingers? Sure. Yeah. My tiny little sausage appendages uh, keep getting stuck to the rope because of my suctioning. So I'm I'm never good. I'm on the side. I'll drive. <laughs> You're just hanging on the side. Oh no. I mean, I I think we all know who was going to drive. I'll drive. Yeah. All right. So yep. as you're driving the carriage, you notice something unique about the look of the trees here in Sablewood. What is are they it? also hybrid? Oh, trees are in bloom. It's springtime, I assume. Sure. It's springtime Wait. and they're in bloom. Excuse and me. <laughs> you're a ranger, not a bard. Don't. That rhyme was way too smooth. <laughs> so can, can you describe the flowers to us? Beautiful. Almost like inverted cherry blossoms right like the pink is more of like a stark darker color by comparison to like the bark of the tree so instead of like light petals and dark wood you have dark petals light wood and Ooh, that would look good it has a very distinct aroma when they bloom almost like the dogwoods were where i'm from very cool as your steeds pull the carriage around a tight corner one wheel coming off the ground for just a moment you see an overturned merchant's cart laying sideways in the path before you, blocking your way. A scattering of fruits and vegetables litter the trail. From around the side of the carriage steps a Strix wolf, a large creature with the body of a wolf, the face of an owl, and large wings adorning its back. It finishes chewing its meal, the hand of the dead merchant, and oh. it stares at you. So it's not the merchant? No. It stares at you, curious, trying to judge whether you're friend or foe. Then you uh, see, following clumsily behind, 
two small pups watching their mother cautiously. From within, from within, the rest of you feel feel your carriage come to a stop. What would you like to do? I call out silently or quietly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eyes up. What did you say they were called? Sorry, one more time. Drixwolves. Drixwolves, two pups. And I bring the carriage to a halt very slowly. You look at the you look over at Barnacle and you just see like the his tongue just kind of go from the one side of the mouth all the way to the other, kind of licking his lips at looking at the pups. Hmm. <laughs> Which is really unnerving since it's like on the side of his face close to his ear, and it kind of goes all the way up in front and then all the way back on the I other still, side. I still don't have his mannerisms down. I, I don't know if he's hungry or <laughs> one eye looks at you. Oh, no, don't do that. No. 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 <laughs> the uh, Strix wolves. The, so they're currently eating the merchant. Or there the, there uh, is one that seems to be finishing up the hand of the merchant whose cart is overturned. Got it. Long gone. So mm-hmm. uh, do I have a shot? Is my next question. Uh, you have line of sight, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, I take out my bow. Okay. Um, do I see like the, the merchant's face at all? Or just his hand coming out of the bird? wolf's mouth just, I'm like his, imagining just it, his hand i'm oh, okay. imagining it choking it down like an owl does yeah that's, that's exactly I, that's how what I, you should be <laughs> <imagining>, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> all right the neck lurch <laughs> that's really hot so as yeah, you begin the hand, to the hand is even still pliable enough to be like <laughs> <laughs> as you begin to pull your bow uh off of your back uh the strix wolf is wary of your movement uh, let's let's make our first roll and see okay. how she reacts. Okay. Um, so we're going to be using your presence trait. So go uh, ahead and grab your duality dice and roll them, and then add your presence. Should have had the affable guy doing this. Adding presence. And then presence if you have any be- hope, I believe we started this game with some hope on your character sheet. You can also add that as well. And that's just a simple modifier. I think that yeah, I think that uh, mine started with two. Mm-hmm. Is that and right? You can, yeah. you can use your hope. You can spend a hope to add your experience if your experience applies. Okay. So my experience here would be nature's friend. So oh, yeah, if, if you want to spend a hope, you could absolutely use that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'll use one of my two hopes. I'll mark that down and then add nature's friend, which is a plus one. Mm-hmm. So you'll add, you'll roll the two die, add your presence, and then add your experience. Okay. Sorry. Presence. Um, maybe I'm just blind. <laughs> so it should be uh, one of your presence. one of your stats at the top of your character sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Mm-hmm. Straight roll. Okay. Twenty plus the nature's friend. Twenty-one total in hope. Okay. Perfect. Um, go ahead and mark a hope then, so you can get get your hope back from that roll. And that was that was definitely a successful roll. So I freeze. I look to Baron. Like you give the word. So it looks as though you're taking its bow. Uh, you can kind of read the Strix Wolf's movements as though it's kind of backing up and spreading its wings out to cover its pups. It's not as much mm. ready to attack you as it is just ready to protect its pups. Do but we you do also dinner. see that the the mother hoot the mother hoot howls as if calling to another Strix, Strix Wolf among the trees, and you know you might not be alone for long. Yeah, Did we have uh, food in our pecs. Yeah, absolutely. I am also dubiously suspicious that it's not hungry. Mm-hmm. I will st- still step down off the cart and like reach into my pack and pull out some rations and just kind of like toss them to the side out into the woods away from this overturned cart. Okay. <clears throat> so um, while he's distracting them, uh, I'm hoping that you're close enough still for me to hear. So. Just while we have a moment, this is still not good to have running around the forest, right? I'm not much of a forest guy myself, but if this is going around attacking merchants, this cannot be good. There's forest Or, oh wait, I guess we don't even have evidence that it killed it. Maybe he was already dead. What do we know? What do we know about these? Are they, are they hunters? Are they scavengers? That's probably going to be another role. But for this, for those at home, um, this is a new game for me, just as it is for our players. None of us have ever played this game before, so I don't have any of the stats memorized yet. So if you want to make a roll and suggest to me what you might be rolling for that, I'm assuming that's going to be a knowledge roll. The thing is part owl and part wolf. I think it's pretty clear that it's a predator. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It might be herbivore, though. It might be a vine. Mm-hmm. I don't know what these words mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> so somebody wants to roll knowledge, and if they have an, an applicable experience <laughs> to see like, what they okay. know about Strix wolves. I don't know, Dick. I didn't... <laughs> if this thing was in the water, I'd know. Yeah. <laughs> It's got feathers and fur. It's terrifying. <laughs> Definitely suppose, carn- carnivorous. Suppose I'll roll for it. Okay. So that is a 21 with fear. Okay. So I'm going to mark a fear that I can use later. Um, and with the 21, you're definitely going to succeed on the check. So with that, you remember, you realize two things in that moment. One, what something you know about Strix Wolves is they are not known for attacking humanoid creatures. Um, They're not known for attacking intelligent creatures. They are predators, but it is very unlikely that this wolf attacked this merchant. So so it can be an opportunity hunter. Correct. We didn't leave Chris Hansen back in town. And two, you remember that just a moment ago, as you were coming around this very same corner, your own cart tipped up off of one of its wheels a bit so anybody could take this turn a little too fast and possibly tip their own cart oh so the real danger is the infrastructure that yeah I can I, get that's behind. what i've been saying for years shoddy <laughs> wagon work yeah that yeah. too really i mean honestly like okay. definitely just poor craftsmen so i'm more than happy to try to scare these things away do we save one of the pups yes all right forever and it will be ours, and we will raise it together. <laughs> Immediately adopted. <laughs> All right, let's work on separating it from the group. We got this. I uh, I, st- I get I'm I've been still on the side of the car talking to you guys from here, but I get down, but I do like you know the, those videos of the frogs where like they're just walking on each other and like trying to like. <laughs> that's what I do to uh, Baron. What's your character's name again? Garrick. Garrick, yeah, that's it. Uh, to Garrick, as he gets down, he's just like part of my step down. Garrick's used to it. <laughs> yeah, he's like a little, like just a little bit of uh, slime on you. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Again, trusted companions. I'm used to it. First couple times, it, it was a little unnerving. Now it's just like this is just how he has to do it. Garrick, I'm glad that we've started to you know get on the right same page here. And he like lick tongue goes up and licks his eye and goes back down. Still not used to that though. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's clear the air here. What is the intention of the party at this point? What what is it you all are trying to do? I think we're abduction. I'm I'm gonna. <laughs> so oh, totally we have, oh, if we have, uh, I mean that's fine. But I'm eating that one. Okay, so you want to eat one of them? Yeah. Oh, I've uh, never had it. Still like halfway holding my bow. I imagine like I'm frozen, <laughs> looking at the rest of you guys. Like, look, if he's gonna eat what? Either way, the this. It's not going to. We're. I think we're going to have to kill it if we. Want Honestly, it. I think that's the best idea that we have so far. <laughs> All right. Eat it. Go for <laughs> it. Kidnap it. Kill the parents. Yeah. Barnacle. No. As you climb out of the cart, based off of your experience and the way you usually do things, I would assume you're kind of taking in your surroundings. Yeah, especially since nope. like probably what it uh, started like hooting for its mm-hmm. partner or whatever. One of my eyes is going over there. I don't think frogs actually have like independent eyes, but this my head cannon it does. Sure. Yeah, this one does. <laughs> so I'm I lick one eye, but the other eye's kind of going around the area. Go ahead and make an instinct roll for me. Hell yeah. And I have plus zero to that. So all right. Here we go. I'm playing Garrick is completely oblivious to anything in the wild. <laughs> I'm not even um, sure these are animals. It's nine with a lot of fear. A lot of pee. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to mark stress. All right. I'm stressed out. Man. <laughs> I'm tweaking. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm going to take a fear. Okay. So what What's you what you didn't notice <laughs> was in a whirlwind of crackling branches and unsheathed blades, a group of four thistle folk. The, oh, God. That wolf has a knife. Alongside the road. <laughs> <laughs> the overturned the cart. Just- was an ambush. Oh! Uh, they stand before you, weapons drawn, blocking the road. So right now, we are going to switch to the battle map, and we're going to explain the action tracker. 
Okay, I'm definitely behind you shooting these guys. My vote's on him shooting one of these guys. Copy. Anybody? Yeah. Probably. yeah. I? I? Okay. Right. So, Who's shooting? on our battle map now, you should be able to see the four Thistle Folk. Oh. I don't. I do. Yes. Okay. Perfect. They're in the trees. You, you don't see them in the trees? It. They're in the trees, Garrick. <laughs> <laughs> Completely lost. I palm the back of your head and, like, lift it up at the tree. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> All right, so these guys Are jump out of the bushes, and it's going to. We're going to start with the player turn, and what that means in Daggerheart is, you guys all get to take actions right off your character sheet, as much as you want in whatever order you want. As you take actions, I'm going to put a token on the action card. At any point in time, if one of you either fails a roll or rolls with fear that will shift it over to the game master turn where the enemies will take their turns until I run out of the action points that you built up on the action card, at which point it will shift back to the player turn. So with that being said, it is currently the player turn who would like to take their turn. Uh, I was already planning on shooting something with my bow. So as soon as Garrick verbally confirms uh, the one beside us, nearest to us, uh, to the right. Okay. I'm shooting him. I use a hope point to use one of my experiences, and that's going to be deadly aim. Okay. So I immediately whip around, like almost over Derek's shoulder, and draw the arrow back as far as it goes, and just unleash on the the nearest target. That's a plus two. Oh, they're over there too. To the right of us, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at that! Did you move his head over one. to the other side? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so eight total. The dice match, so it's the same for both. Hope and fear. Okay, uh, so... Ten plus deadly aim, so... Hold 10. on. Sorry. You said the dice match. Yeah. So that's a critical. Critical. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Nice. Crit. Holy okay. shit! <laughs> so our first attack roll is a critical. Let's go. Um, <laughs> All right, we've peaked. Let's go ahead and pack it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, guys. I rolled a one on my damage dice, of course. So, so Correct. the way the critical success works for damage rolls is you're going to automatically take the maximum potential value of your damage dice, I love it. and out, then yeah. you're going to take your roll on top of that, and then add any modifiers. Yeah. So that would be my. Damage dice plus two for physical, or it's a PHY in parentheses. I assume I'm that means physical to, damage. I'm going to take a look at your character sheet here. Yeah, that just means that somebody's playing Gangnam style. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oop, oop, oop. Pardon me. Sorry. <laughs> so my short bow active weapon is a 1d8 plus two. Yeah. So there you go. So there it is. So I see it be, now. So it yeah. So 10. it's. So you get the two because it's physical. So you, you it's eight because that's the max on your damage die. Plus you yes. rolled a one, so that's nine. Plus okay. the two, so that's eleven. Oh, okay. So you also add the the act what you actually rolled on top. Correct. Excellent. I got it. So for our listeners at home, the way HP works in Daggerheart is you have a minor damage threshold, a major damage threshold and a severe damage threshold. So this uh, Thistle Folk Thief has a major threshold of 10, which means with your 11, you immediately take out two of this Thistle Folk Ambusher's HP. Hell yeah. I say something cool right after, like, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> so basically I'm... what happened here is all four of these guys jump out, right? And three of them seem to be brandishing weapons and ready to immediately attack you. But one of them was actually sneaking around and going for your cart. What's your ranger's name again? My ranger name is Varian Soto. Varian sees the one that seems to be sneaking around toward your cart and immediately trains his bow upon that enemy, unleashes an arrow, and hits him directly in the chest. He doesn't quite go down just yet, but he does look like he's pretty injured. He Holy did not shit, like Soto. <laughs> and then just the action, or were we allowed to reposition so, ourselves? 
So that that just puts an action on my action tracker. Cool. At which point anybody can do anything that they want on that turn. So you can you can move around. You somebody else can take their turn. You guys can do whatever you want until one of you fails. Yep. Question. Can you explain to me? So there's the experience thing, right? And I have the don't see me coming and strike a deal. I assume it's kind of similar to what it's like in um, the City of Mist, where it's kind of like it has different like special abilities that are just kind of unique to something that you picked. Yes. So where do I see like your character? You uh choose um, your own experiences, and essentially anything that you do that kind of fits that description you can spend a hope to add that experience to it, a role. Okay. So you can use that at any point in time you want. You just have to spend the, the hope to use it, and it has to kind of fit. Now, this is going to actually be helpful for listeners at home if you choose to play this beta test. We are playing the provided characters. So in the beta test materials, if you look at the character sheet, the next sheet down from the character sheet is going to be a kind of breakdown of all of the different parts of the character sheet. Main effects, features, like the different cards that they have. The next sheet down is going to be the cards. Mm. And then the next sheet down after that is a character overview. And in that character overview, it goes over the experiences and kind of tells you what they mean. But actually, it doesn't really describe it all that well. Uh, Looking at it on page eight, uh, it shows uh, the different, like almost like a timeline kind of view. Um, where it does show like experience represents particular specializations. Yeah, but um, if you go down to like the go down two pages from there to where it has the barnacle character overview, um, it says barnacle has the experiences they don't see me coming and strike a deal. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I see. But that. I, that's what, what I was, I was saying is I thought it was going to further. No, but that's fine. I mean, we can meant, just like but they didn't. So yeah, just just make it up as you go as you go along. Yeah, just anything really that, that kind of fits strike a deal or anything that kind of fits mm-hmm. they don't see me coming. If you spend gotcha. the hope and you have the hope, you can add that to your die roll. Got it, got it. So, and just to make sure action economy is more of kind of loosey-goosey, anytime we take an action, you can also take one? Yeah, so every time you take an action, I add a token to the action mm-hmm. tracker. Cool. Once one of you either rolls with fear or fails a roll, that starts the GM turn. And however many mm. tokens are on the action tracker, that decides how many actions I get to take. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I see the uh, the the froggy people in the trees. Are those also uh, barnacle boys or ribbits? So they are thistle folk. And to be fair, what I was supposed to do is give you all an opportunity to describe what a thistle folk is because the adventure and the general setting does not define a thistle folk. Um, um, so this, this, this is, this is like kind of like a ragtag group of misfits that are now bandits because they've been outcast of society. So they live in the thistles. Yeah. So go. the general idea of Daggerheart in general, it's very supposed to be very player led. Um, and to be honest, being a Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition dungeon master for so long, I'm used to being much more game master led. So, uh, you have pointed out my own flaw where I've missed so, yes, what you described, that's exactly what it is. So maybe one of them is a ribbit. Maybe one of them is not. Maybe they're they're just different little yeah, guys see, like, who are different there's, outcasts. There's, there's some amphibious ones, and then there's, like, the goblin boy over here next to me. So, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's what, since it was kind of like a, a you know, menagerie of weirdos, I figured yeah. that was kind of like my, my uh, headcanon. So, yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to look at, do I recognize any of these ribbits? Uh, not personally, no. The, these guys would have grown up in these forests where you're more of a, a city guy. Oh, you think just bumping. because they're a ribbit, you recognize them? That's we're not we're not that far from town. Some big time city <laughs> frog coming out to the thistle folk. <laughs> hey, this is here. It's hard back in the streets. I love that. <laughs> hard back in the streets. You sit here. You listen. To, I'm gonna um and like while I'm sitting here like. <laughs> kind of like talking shit i'm going to um oh wait no you're not yeah whatever i'm gonna stab this guy next to me in the in the in the heart okay so that's the same one that uh varen shot would oh, you say sh- i would have advantage if i kind of panned around him a little bit sure yeah i'd give that to you you're kind of a sneaky guy and this guy's pretty yeah. distracted by the fact that he just got shot in the chest yeah so I'm gonna say like you won't understand 
how hard it is to be where I grew up in these dang street. And I stab him in the back. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead. I kind of see like the, the crossbow bolt coming out of his shoulder, like the bolt itself. So I'm just going to go on the, uh, yeah, I'll just like, go on the other side and just make it, make it symmetrical. Side, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, rolling the two, my hope and fear. And if I can grab it, there it goes. Critical eight and an eight. Jeez. Yeah. You all can't this be stopped. Guy. Let's this go. Guy. It's just this guy. They fall for it every time. <laughs> All right, so as we just discussed, the way critical works with attack rolls is you're going to do your max damage die, plus you're going to roll your damage die and then add your modifier. Okay, so it's a D8. I thought I had a secondary weapon. Did I not? Um, well, let me take a look at your character sheet here. Oh, I, I don't have it here, but I think I assigned one. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I mean, a dagger if you out. did, you could, you could make another attack with your offhand. Okay, cool. Oh, it just wasn't a quit? Nope. Nope, that's not it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm going to hit it, so that's 8, and then I roll another D8 to... Uh, that's correct. On the critical? Okay, cool. Got my green die. That's a 6, and then what else was it? Sorry. And then add your modifier. So for the dagger, I believe... Oh, plus 2. I'm showing on your character sheet that it's just the 1 D8, that with the, with the physical you aren't doing an extra plus 2. Now, you could spend a hope... And since you were, All right, I thought you were saying back, I get the max and then an additional D8. Sorry, yes, that yes, makes that's more correct. sense. What you said, yeah, you get the you get the max and the D8, but I don't see I don't see any modifiers to your dagger on your character. This is plus two finesse. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll I'll go ahead and give that to you on the anyone who is playing the the beta material, the character sheets that they give show the dagger being physical, not finesse. So it's probably coming off the strength, which is why it's not giving a, a oh, modifier. Yeah. However, I believe that is a misprint because looking at this, it does say finesse melee. Yeah. And Anthony is using the digital version of the character sheets, which are updated by Darrington Press. And it is giving the plus two for the finesse. So that actually makes more sense. So anybody who is using the beta test materials, make sure you look out for stuff like that. Yeah. Do, do, do the needful. And then if you wanted to, since you were sneaking around this guy, you could totally spend a hope to add they don't see me coming and add another plus two. Oh, wait, I'm stressed out. There we go. Sorry, I didn't. I thought I, I guess I didn't uh, mark that. Okay, cool. So a hope will give me a plus two or just give me another die. Sorry, I missed that part. Another plus two. So you you have the ah. eight, the max eight on your die, plus whatever you rolled on your die. Yeah. Plus the plus two for the finesse. Yeah. So eight plus six plus two. So 16. 16. <laughs> All right. So this guy, like I said, his major threshold is 10. Somebody. His severe threshold is 15. So you just did severe damage to this guy, which would immediately do three points of damage off of his health. This guy goes down like a sack of potatoes. Well, I, I want to, with my dagger in his back and grab onto the crossbow bolt and just kind of hold him up a little bit as like a meat shield and just kind of put him in the in the uh in between me and um i would say how much movement what how does movement work in this because i don't actually see that on uh well i guess i didn't i can look at this too but because i moved about 5 10 15 if we're going by the five per square thing mm -hmm. um and i want to kind of put myself in an advantageous situation uh, so i don't get flanked right right so basically, um, how much movement do I have? And so th this is this is an interesting question because the way Daggerheart tracks distance is it's like um, yeah, it's like the short, far, like the, exactly. yeah, watching the video where it's like a piece of paper and such, right? Exactly. So there's like the the short end of a playing card, then mm -hmm. there's like the short side of a piece of paper, and then the long side of a piece of paper. So I believe we're looking at the, if you're talking like the movement on a turn, I'm going to say that's probably like, quote unquote, the short side of a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are trying to maneuver while using this guy's meat shield, I'm going to say that slows you down probably a little bit. Yeah, so I figured. talking about like the length of a playing card now. So that's just going to be a couple If we were squares. to put it into a couple, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to go just down here and I want to put the guy uh, in between uh, one, uh, one more up in between me and the, uh, Homeboy, I know that it kind of puts me in a weird one, but I want to. I'm hoping that it keeps me from the other two. No, actually, go back to where you were. I that that makes more sense to me. Okay. All right. 
For and those go, who are listening and can't see, basically, uh, Ribbit has dragged this body as a meat shield uh, yeah. a little bit further to the south and put in this body between him and another one of the Thistlefolk ambushers. I'm fine, out. Make my day. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and uh, end my, let my somebody else go now. So seeing... I lick his eye. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't fight you back. I mean, it's, oh. you're, you're carrying a corpse. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Musky. So seeing them very, very quickly take out that guy, I'm just going to pull out my battle axe and rush these other two. Okay. Uh, are they and, in the trees, by the way, or are they in the cover of the trees? They have, they, they're actually like bushes and they've jumped out of oh, the bushes. Okay. So, all right. I had a really cool thing planned, but if they're not in a tree, then. We, I mean, like, this is player led. If on your turn, oh, if fair, one yeah. of them hasn't been attacked yeah. yet, if you tell me one of them's I, in a tree, you know what? One of them's in a tree. I, I, I I'm pretty sure that guy's still in a tree. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he looks like a tall guy, but he's actually in a tree. He's a short guy like me. <laughs> I would like All to right, swing Benson. my battle axe. Yeah. Go for it. Get it. Kari, Kari, Kari. <laughs> See, I move, I, I'd move his, the guy's jaw and go, Kari, Kari. Uh, that is a 14 with fear. 14 with fear. Okay. But whose fear? I think we know. So a 14, you're still definitely going to hit. Um, so go ahead and finish your attack here. But when you're done, because you rolled with fear, that is going to make it the GM's turn. Okay. So I, no. I, since I hit, I'm going to use my whirlwind ability. Okay. So when I make a successful attack, I can spend a hope and use that roll against every other enemy in my weapon's range. Which, since I'm a giant, my range is essentially 10 feet. Nice. Perfect. So, so you, got, you, got, you got two guys there that you could definitely hit with that whirlwind. It's just any additional enemies only take half damage rounded up. So that'll be five to the main guy, which I'll say this top one here. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a very important question. Yes. The Mother Strixwolf is within your range. Are you including the Mother Strixwolf in this attack? No. Okay. So how much Sorry, did you say we agreed to, to the... the parents to duck the children, but okay. <laughs> Stick to the plan. <laughs> so how much did you say was going to the, the main one that you're attacking? So five to the main one. And then since it's rounded up, it would be three to the other one. Okay. So five damage is going to be enough to break the minor threshold. So you're going to do one damage. And that is also going to break the minor threshold of the other guy too. So you're going to do one damage to both of them. Nice. As I just run up bellowing and swinging my axe in a really big arc. So yeah, you, you basically do a nice spin move with your axe. It, you know, kind of hits the chest of both of them as it completes the arc and kind of kind of cuts them open there. And they're, they're a little hurt. And then it is going to be my turn. Now we've taken three actions so far and put, in, and take, put three tokens on my action card. So I'm going to spend that first token. And one of the guys you just attacked with that whirlwind is going to go ahead and attack you. Fair. So that is going to be a 15 to hit you. Oh, yeah. All right. And he's striking out with his dagger. And that is going to be eight damage. Okay. That just meets my minor. All right. So that, I believe, when minor, you're only going to take one. But let me go up to your character sheet here. I believe you might have armor. Yes, you have three armor. So you could go ahead and take that one HP, or you could mark one of your armor and not take any damage at all. It marks a stress if it's under minor, right? No, you mark a stress if you would mark damage and you can't... No, hold on. Yes, it would mark a stress. But in this case, what I'm saying is you've got three unmarked blocks of armor next to your mm. armor thing. So if you mark one of those, basically they hurt your armor instead of hurting you. So you wouldn't even mark a stress. You would just mark one of those armor. Okay, I'll just do that then. Yeah, because the armor is basically, think of it as like damage reduction. But you can only do so much of it. Yeah. We're learning. All right, and now the not... other one that you attacked is also going to move up and attack you. And that's going to be a 10 to hit. That also hits. Okay. Yeah, I have five evasion. I'm not very hard to hit. Well, you are a big, slow target, so... And that's going to be 11. All right. That time I'll just take the one damage here. Okay. You got a pretty high minor threshold. Yeah, my minor's 8, my major's 13. Nice. 
See, that's that's where it makes up for the evasion. Like, yeah, you're you're not evading much, but like when they do hit you, they're not doing a whole lot either. <laughs> All right, so that was two of the three tokens on my action card. So I'm going to spend the last one, and this guy right here, the the last uh, thistle folk to be living, is going to look at the damage that that bow did to his buddy and is going to attempt to throw a dagger at Varen. Are we able to, like, do... Old move, Cotton. I'm trying to think of, like, <laughs> how I could spin this. <laughs> yeah, I hope it works out for him. <laughs> <laughs> there, There's something I have, and I want to see... I want to do something cool. Sh fucking, where is it? I just I saw it. I think I saw it on the, uh, the, the doobly-doo here. Are we able to, like... Uh, again, like, how do reactions kind of work with this... So what what action are you trying to do? There's something where I can use my tongue, and I'd like to grab. I would like to get the dagger by the hilt. Okay, I see what you're saying. I can use the experience. Not on. Wait, no, that's different from the experience that I have. Oh wait, I'm looking at Marlo. Just kidding. Uh, still <laughs> using my tongue. I don't think Marlo has the extended tongue, but um, so I as... don't think I could use. They don't see me coming here, but I would like to. Uh, use a hope point or is it a stress point or something that allows me to grab that thing out of the air of course i assume i have to roll for it but so here's what we're gonna do um okay. normally for reactions you would need some sort of uh ability that lets you interrupt an attack or something like that that would normally be one of your cards which i don't think you that have makes sense like no that. no i don't think so i think that but the the way it works is like I can use this on if I'm making a turn or something like that, but yeah. I can't find it now. So, but I think that what you're trying to do is pretty cool and yeah. rule of cool wins. And this is player led. Hell yeah. So I will allow you to do it uh, by marking a stress. So go ahead. And oh, here it is. Long tongue. Stress. Yeah. You can use your long, powerful tongue. Love that to Ooh. grab onto things close to you. You may also mark a stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that does D12 physical damage. So, so better idea. I have an idea. Bear with me for a moment. I see him starting to throw it. I want to lash out with my tongue, marking a stress, and unleash it as a close weapon to... I won't do the damage if you let me grab his whole ass wrist and just throw, bring him down off the tree. I'm not going to give you that, but I will okay, give you fine. grabbing the dagger out of midair. If you give okay. me, if you give mark, me an inch, I'm going to take a mile. You have mark, to bring rip in. <laughs> mark the stress. I'm going to let you mark a stress in order to do something that you can't normally do. I'll Hell let yeah. you attempt to grab the dagger. I'm so stressed out. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a finesse roll for me. Hell yeah. All right. I need a better place to roll this stuff. My desk is in corporate goblin mode. Plus my stress, so plus two. No, no, no. So... you're marking the stress. You're not adding your stress. Or sorry, my, plus my finesse. Finesse, that's correct. Um, so 10 on die with fear, and plus two with finesse is 12. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Since you rolled higher than the 10. Hell yeah. We're going to say you succeeded, okay? Since it was with fear, you managed to grab that thing by the blade. Oh, I was hoping it was like, you don't knock him down, but <laughs> he, you stop his dagger, but no. So yeah, you grab the dagger. You succeed at what it is that you were trying to do, but you grab the dagger out of midair by the blade. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark uh, a point of health um, okay. as, as that dagger cuts into your tongue. Yeah. Uh, so you guys see ribbit uh, a hand on this uh, crossbow bolt and in the dagger, mouth like up a jar like Pac-Man, Tongue going straight out, and you just hear, ah! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like go, literally everything he does. Why do we adventure with him? <laughs> <laughs> Barian's impressed. Gets A little nervous, too. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. Shoot the thing? Not so bad, though. <laughs> I'm not I, 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 do, I bring it back to me and I drop it and that's how I got my second dagger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Barney. So that that is the end of the tokens on my action card, which makes it player turn again. Well, back to then Garrick, who hasn't had a 
turn, right? Correct. Well, okay. it, it doesn't necessarily work like that. If I like, like if we as a as a team are like, you know what, we're going to do this player by player by player, mm-hmm. and I'm like, it would work better if one of you did this. Then yeah, it, we can totally do that. Yeah, it's okay. however, the um, way again, the game itself describes it is that however narratively you guys decide your turns work yeah. is how it works. I'm, I'm pretty sure Shogun and KTC are the only ones that have read the stuff. So that was more for the people listening at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I want to I want to make sure I'm helping, make sure everybody, right. you know gets right. their say but if you're gonna abstain i'm, I'm shooting another arrow immediately nope. i i do have something i want to try i want to hear it, this sounds- this idea of why he was asking are they in a tree so the one that okay. just threw a dagger at varen is definitely in the tree sure i i'm just gonna like see because i didn't know he was in there before uh in fact i'm now wondering if there's just a thistle folk in every tree now okay uh, but i know there's one there so I'm going to look at it. I'm going to gauge the tree and I'm going to rush the tree. Okay. And I'm going to, as I reach it, I'm going to kick it as hard as I can to knock him out. And I'm going to use my battle strategist to spend a hope to have advantage on that. I fucking love it. Let's let's roll some dice. Sweet. So I'm going to spend a hope. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's let's. See if this is going to do 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 do. What attack am I going to do this with? Is it? Hold on. There we go. Okay. Okay. Wait. No, that's just the damage. So start by rolling your both your die. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll my physical die because I know I have those. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna roll this with advantage, which is a d6, right? That's correct. Let me get another sprinkle die out. So I'm looking at nine on the d12s. With hope okay. as the high, and then a five on a d6. So that's, I don't, math, 14. Nice, and right? then you, you add one for your strength, because I'm, I'm assuming you're you're just yes, hitting yeah. this thing with your shoulder, like as hard. No, you said you kicked it. You're kicking it you're as hard as you can. Yeah. So yeah, strength. So um, 15. So 15. 15 is definitely enough. Um, the This tree shakes just enough for this guy to lose his footing. Now, it does say on a success, I can choose to deal 1d8 physical damage to the target. So I'm choosing to do this damage to him. Yeah, totally. Um, now, so we're going to we're going to do you have an idea of how you want to do that damage? It's just him falling out of the tree. OK, I, I just didn't know if you wanted yeah, him to yeah. fall on to something in particular. Oh, um, no, 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 no. OK, no. so, yeah, we're just going to say he hits his head on a rock on the way down. Um, yeah, that's. That's more, or he would just lands weird. You ever yeah. fallen out of a tree? I'm pretty sure I take a D8 every time I fall off the last step of the stairs. I, it's, it's, I'll go ahead and let you roll that D8 for me. Okay. So basically, uh, Garrick, just like I said, he kind of gauges the situation. He's like, all right. And just runs forward as quick as he can and kicks it. And the guy falls at his feet. And Not a clean, not a clean fall, like... No, 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 no. He, he was yeah. like, he was like trying to maintain his balance and then like slipped. And so he like, fucking, it was not. Yeah, he, he, he hits and scorpions. It's like oh. kicks himself in the back of the head. It was um, not graceful. <laughs> uh, two damage on that D8 roll. All right. That's going to be enough to break that minor threshold. Oh, nice. Which is going to do a damage. Which actually, yeah, that's fair. I'm not looking. I wasn't looking to kill the guy. We're going to three. We're going to say he's definitely prone if nothing sure. else so i really really wish he would fall in by a horse because i had a pun ready but you and know we can't win them all was that with hope or with fear that initial roll oh hope hope oh okay. yeah, yeah yeah uh let me go ahead and spend that hope that i did so there we go just to let you know every time you guys have rolled with hope you should be gaining a hope by the way that's that's my bad oh. i should have been telling you because but i'm new to this system so yep no me too and criticals would just be that they would you would not gain a hope or a fear. Uh, that is correct. Copy. But you are getting the extra. Actually, no. On a critical success, you get what you want and a little more. Gain a hope and clear a stress. Excellent. I will. I will tell the guy as he's at my feet. I see you've reached a new low. <laughs> he groans, and you're not sure if it's from the pun, from the pun or the pain, or the pain of the pun. You're you're just pun not sure. The pain. <laughs> 
I, I kind of kind of want to fuck around with this game and have like a bard who just does puns, but every time oh. he does one, he takes a stress. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't or do maybe damage. like depending. Dep- yeah, okay, that, I like that actually. <laughs> yeah, the guy doesn't f- take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made a few words, but man, <laughs> those words though. <laughs> do they hit? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Barnacle good. laughs. <laughs> That's right. why he's around, because he yeah. laughs at my jokes. Oh, okay. I mean, it all makes sense. It all comes together. <laughs> and we all high five and freeze frame. Yeah. <laughs> why do you build me up? <laughs> build me a buttercup, folk. please. <laughs> the thistle, thistle folk wonder what's going on. They crawl away. <laughs> you see, like, just the, the slife doll, sloth person part of his tongue in the background too <laughs> i uh i i just or uh, <laughs> shakes his head like <laughs> in approval but also like all right <laughs> turns sees kari getting a majority of the the lion's share of action and oh. uh knocks another arrow at one of the uh, rd injured targets okay so i will Use my short bow again, which is marked for uh, agility and far, right? So the agility is the plus two, and then far means how far it can go. Yeah, it's yeah. The like distance, I, I which would. I'm pretty sure everything on this battle map right now is considered far. So cool. All right, within so the I'll range that. of. I'll spend a hope and add my deadly aim as well for plus two. Okay, um, this one would be thirteen fear, and then adding the two fifteen total to hit. 15 is definitely going to hit. Yep. Oh. So go ahead and roll your damage. Yeah. Okay. It is with fear, so you're going to you're gonna mark uh, while well, I take a fear. Yep. That would be 4 plus 2 for the agility, so 6 total damage. All right. 6 is going to be enough to break the major threshold. Um, so you're going nice. to do 2 damage, which nice. is going to be just enough to take it out. So are you shooting over the left shoulder or the right shoulder of Kari here to take out the Thistle Folk? right shoulder i don't want you to lose sight on the strix wolves so sort of allowing you to like keep your focus on the next target and then the other strix wolf in front of you if that makes sense yeah taking taking out the one to your right and um i would move up from that i feel like the other two are dealt with garrick's got this one he's verbally assaulting him <laughs> <laughs> i i'll move up a little bit closer to to kari okay um, since that was with fear, but I only have one action here, I am going to take that action on my GM turn, and this Strix Wolf here is going to take its opportunity to try to take its leave with its pups. So it's just no! going to move back this way with its pups. Son of a bitch! Damn it, I was going to throw the Fissile Folk at the Strix Wolf. And show a mother- <laughs> throw a motherfucker at another motherfucker. <laughs> Feed him, feed him. A life of crime never pays. <laughs> I think we all have very different views on how these Strix wolves should be handled. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, if anybody wants to play this beta test material, if you are hearing this and you're like, hey, I want to run that game, this beta gives an example of how to react for every one of these ways that these guys have suggested dealing with these Strix wolves. So uh, wow. it tells me exactly what to do if they do any of these things. So it's, it's very comprehensive. I'll give it that. All right. All right. So who is going to take a turn now? As seeing the Strix wolf leave, instead of throwing the thistle folk at the beast, I'm just going to grab this man like by both arms and pick him up and turn him to Varian. They just like hold him up like a target. <laughs> uh, you know what? Then I think Varian should go next. Fucking hit that. Look, here we go. I wouldn't. One Straight of the things through. I dreaded in fifth edition was grapple oh. rules. Uh. <laughs> um, because I had to look them up every time. It's actually not that difficult of a rule. It just comes up so rarely that I would yeah. literally have to go to the book every time everybody someone I- wanted to grapple. Mm. I just I just kind of make it up and just hope I'm right. Which I'm <laughs> I pretty sure like, I am. Yeah, yeah. Or, we always did contested strength. It was just like, are yeah. you stronger yeah. than the other person? Roll for it. And then <laughs> yep. that was our solution. So yeah, athletics or sometimes it was whatever, like the one where like sleight of hand or whatever, if they were like slippery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> so, Slimy. of course, one of the things I did not do when preparing for this game 
was look up the grapple rules <laughs> for Daggerheart. Of, of course. Of so course. I of have course. no idea how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the, the playtest materials and I'm going to do a control F grapple. Yeah. Um, and You're see welcome. if see if it's there. <laughs> Adaptability. <laughs> I mean, it should be under strength because it's one of the things listed for under strength on our sheets. It is. A uh, high strength score means you're better at feats that test physical object, blah, 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 lift, smash, or grapple. Okay. Apparently it scales with enemy level. Okay. Uh, uh, it's just a... It literally has... So it's just it's just a strength check. Like you would just roll your, your two die and add the strength. And on a five, subdue a child. On a ten, I just found that too. <laughs> on a ten, subdue a weak adult. On fifteen, <laughs> subdue an average adult. On a twenty, subdue a skilled wrestler. On a twenty-five, subdue a large beast. On a thirty, subdue a legendary beast. So this is just going to be a fifteen. Like it's just a fifteen DC to uh, to roll your two die and do a strength roll. So. Magic with Zuby on X says, ah, yes, I'm glad we know the DC of how to grapple children. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. It's too low. Grappling a it's <laughs> way too low. Hold on. It's, it's As somebody low. who is in wrestling and has an autistic son, that grappling of my son, whenever he's acting out, way more difficult. I feel like... <laughs> Grappling a child should be a series of checks, like a finesse check, <laughs> yeah. followed by a strength check. <laughs> well, yeah. you're also you taking your hands on sanity, first. Sanity check. Um, str I, you automatically take two stress. Uh, automatically. Automatically. Yeah. yeah. Hold him steady, Kari. <laughs> but that is a 17 with hope. A 17 with hope. So, yeah, go ahead and mark hope that you, you beat the 15. So, yeah, you got him. <laughs> the enemy. I do not like this. <laughs> you just grab, pick up, and turn. Like, there is a moment of silence and then fear within this guy's eyes. He looks <laughs> He looks past, and you see uh, uh, Barnacle with his friend's arm just waving it like this to Adam. <laughs> and then, and then oh, there's like, just uh, like... Uh, uh, what's that? that? What's that? Uh, Pennywise. Go ahead. And then it's just followed by a panic scream. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd imagine his initial reaction is, "Oh, he's grappling me. He's gonna leave me alive." Wait. <laughs> yeah. Panic scream. Shortly cut. By Will another arrow. It, we, yeah, Will help <laughs> scream. Number, panic scream. Number three. Panic scream goes off to like a a, a a shot of above the canopy of the forest, and you hear Wilhelm scream. Yeah, and, it just, <laughs> and then birds. <laughs> uh, a loose an arrow. It's um. The dice roll, 14, fear, plus two, 16. Okay, that's definitely going to hit. We're so Damage. stressed out. Max. Nice. Eight plus two, 10. 10. Imagine jumping us. There's okay. like two guys out, like just off of the clearing that, a little bit. That, just like, nope, fuck this. And they leave. <laughs> so <laughs> the 10, other, like the uh, proxy scouts. Yeah. Like, uh -uh. <laughs> so 10 is going to just clear the severe damage nice. threshold which is going to do three damage so like exactly how you guys just described it basically kari reaches over picks this guy up turns him around there's like this panicked fear and silence in his eyes followed by this panic scream then you hear the arrow release followed by the wilhelm, wilhelm scream and then yeah. death just... I, i'm imagining sequence of events that just happened though so when you do, when you just said imagine jumping us, all I could imagine was Kari holding him and be like, "What were you thinking?" Yeah, <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> just just lecturing him in unto his death. <laughs> I like the series of events that happened though. Is like we immediately come out, shoot a guy in a tree. I bring another. Like wait, no, no. Shoot a guy. Stabbed him in the back I, immediately. I start talking shit, stabbing him in the back. Use him as a meat puppet. Uh, some You hit uh, somebody on the other side. <laughs> we knock this other guy down. It's like, but like in the process, we keep getting stressed out. And also, I lost a tip of my tongue. 
Yeah. It's like, these guys are the worst effective (laughs) heroes. (laughs) All right. So you did roll with fear, which will make it the the GM move. At which point, the guy who uh, fell out of the tree is just going to see what just happened and attempt to scramble to his feet and take off. Mm. Garrick, you are right there. Are you going to try to stop him? I'll give him a little trip. (laughs) Okay. You know, I'm just not even going to make you roll for that. Like, it's just, that just... Just as he's getting up, I'm just going to watch him the whole time. He's just going to get up. He's looking at me. He turns to run, and I kick his foot over into his other foot. Yeah, at the point, like, he, like, catches himself on his hands enough. Like, he does fall, but catches And, like, he's, like, still going, like, with his hands and his feet and just, like, continues to attempt to run. So... But wait. But wait. There's we more. have to question you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's... He's gone. He's. How about, he's well, how about this? How about this? If he keeps going to run yes. after I say, but yes. wait, I'm going to take my long sword and just toss it at him, and I want it to land right beside his face. Oh. He, g- g- yeah, let's. I'm going to call that one a finesse roll over a strength roll. Something in me wants to fail this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what's going to happen if you fail. <laughs> you know 100% what's going to happen if you fail. <laughs> Whoo! Okay. <laughs> so dumb. All right. Uh, and we're gonna say while all this is happening, the uh, the Strix Wolf gets a little bit further away to the point where the, the, a bitch. It, the Strix sure. Wolf and its pups are now out of reach. God damn it! <laughs> uh, you want to just make a an attack roll? A finesse or, roll. Oh, a finesse roll. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You did say that, didn't you? Finesse. You know what? Screw it. I I will I will roll with hope because you know. Wait, can I? Well, you can choose to spend a hope to use one of your experiences. Oh, yeah, yeah nothing applies. I don't see that. I don't think that sounds very affable. No, nope. <laughs> what you're trying to do here? <laughs> uh, an eight with hope. An eight. I I don't think like this is going to be very hard. Um. So yeah, we're definitely just going to go ahead and say that succeeds. Um, just waiting, I'm just waiting to just botch that, and it just clips him to the back of the head. Just it it goes in the ground, but through his head. <laughs> so no, this thing this thing lands right next to the guy, um, and he just kind of like stops dead in his tracks. He may have peed himself a little bit. You um, missed. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always miss? And he's just, he's just he's just frozen. He is he is he is not moving. You do it like this. I take out my... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just starts throwing blades at him. <laughs> this is what I'm imagining, is he's standing there as that happens. He gets hit with a dagger, an arrow, uh, and, and another fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> His buddy just... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Guess I'll get my sword. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go over and I'll, and I'll get my sword and I'll just kind of use my toe to convince him to flip over onto his back. Uh, yeah, he offers no resistance. Odd. So, do you guys do that over there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. How do we feel about that? Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to eat, man. Yeah? yeah? There's lots of food in the road. You could have just taken that food. The The... Foods on the road because we tipped the cart. Right, but you're hungry, right? Y- yeah. You could have just taken the food and gone. Yeah, we thought you might have more. Mm. Food or money? I mean, money buys food. That's just greedy. Uh, and I like, I'm pointing at him like uh, with his friend's <laughs> hand. That's just greedy. <laughs> it's obvious he's taking psychological damage <laughs> as you're doing. Yeah, right, it's like he's... right, right. It's going to need a therapist. So this is this is the deal. We don't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to your favorite spot. I'm going to tie you up. I'm going to leave you up high enough so the raccoons can't get you. Oh, they're terrible this time of year. Well, we're going to send saw, word. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I saw I saw one just chew chew man's toes right. right off. Now, okay, everything in this forest is a hybrid animal. Yeah, I know. So what kind of raccoon is it? He doesn't know. It's just a raccoon to him. No, I'm letting you world build right now. What kind of raccoon uh, I, is it? Uh, I, I was more character building that he's fucking stupid oh, okay. and he doesn't know. <laughs> cool. 
that works too. Let's let's go let's go for it. I mean, he's not stupid, but he's a city folk. You know, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. No, noble city folk. He don't know animals. These are yeah, raccoons, yeah, yeah. I think. Okay, <laughs> he'll be like. Well, you know what? I'm going to assume that one of you was like, no, 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 they're all hybrid animals. Okay. Uh, a raccoon turtle. I, is Are those things? Ah, uh, the raccoon turtle. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're terrible. Vicious. <laughs> yeah. If if it catches you, it's real <laughs> I slow. Can, I can see me and the bandit both looking at them at this point like, are you fucking with us? <laughs> <laughs> no, raccoon turtles, they're terrible. Like, they're, they're, they, they're really smart. They wash their food, too. And they got the, the shield on their back. And they take their time. Great in soup. They can live for hundreds of years. Make good hats. I heard I one lived to be a thousand. He's completely believing this now. I don't want to be in this forest. Why? I are saw we here? one <laughs> eat a guy's toes. Okay. Well, we're gonna tie you in the tree until very slowly. Until very a guard slowly. can come, and we're gonna send word to the city. They're gonna come and collect you. You'll go to jail. Whatever they do, mm-hmm. whatever they do to you, common folk. And then we're fine because we took out bad guys. We're not going to be right. charged for murder. No, no, <laughs> no. So, so, what was, we so said him, the best, huh? as you said about doing everything that you just described, um, uh-huh. you can tell that like he's looking around, like looking for opportunities to escape. But every time like he looks a direction, he sees another one of your buddies ready to slit his throat. So <laughs> he's just like, I, I, I see no way out and just allows you to tie him to the tree. <laughs> And uh, he, he even puts his finger on the knot so that I can tie it. Like, yeah, yeah, like it's. <laughs> I ask him. I do ask him what uh, the guy I'm I'm puppeteering his name it was. That's Bill. Oh. They were lovers. You were lovers. Uh, I I wouldn't say that. We, I'm world building. What would you we say? <laughs> I'm world building. <laughs> what would you lovers, say? Bandits. I mean, lovers. you know, was like, it like? I wouldn't say he was Just my lover, but sometimes, sometimes out by the fire, it gets lonely. You know, oh, things, things happen. Yeah. Down to the wreck hurdles in the distance. <laughs> I I totally get it. I totally get it. I was at a I was at a cookout one time, and we had a fire. Yeah, these trees are so romantic this time of year. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you coming on to me right now? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, oh, speaking. oh, sorry. Because I mean, if you were, I'd be okay. No, okay. <laughs> focus. <laughs> sorry, right. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Bill, Bill slaps him and says, "Focus." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on par for us. So this is par right. for our group. So you have you have successfully taken out the ambushers. The Strix Wolf and her pups are gone. You have this cart in the road that's kind of blocking your cart a little bit. What do you guys want to do? This is going to be it for this episode of our Daggerheart playtest. Tune in next time to find out how our players will handle the road in front of them and to find out what happens when they actually reach the town of Hush. Make sure to check the description for links to the Daggerheart beta test materials and for links to check out all the players you heard today. We'll see you in the next one.